let's look at what this looks like, right? And um, we've, we've talked about the fact that the curriculum is different in Nigeria and other parts of the world, but I think there's a better way to go about it. Not just saying, oh, America should look at all these countries, but what about if we looked at what made people like Isaac Newton? What made people like uh, Leonard Euler? What was the approach they used to learn math? What if we use that? Because those were the, some of the best mathematicians the world has ever known. Isaac Newton, Leonard Euler, Carl Frederick Gauss, these were amazing mathematicians. So let's talk about the route that I recommend and I believe is the best option. Now you can take it and modify it however you want, but there's some key tenets. Number one, we seek to master the concepts, right? We seek to understand each concept we work on. So what I do in my book, Tools for Mastering Mathematics, in the first part of the book, I talk about how to master mathematics, how to be good at doing math. So that's the first part of the book. In the second part of the book, I give a handbook, a handbook that you can use to, to basically understand and dissect the concepts that you're learning and I, I'd like to go back to. So let's say you've learned polynomials and rules of exponents, but now you're in calculus and you've forgotten what you learned then. You just take my, the second part of our book uh, in the second part and it's like a dictionary. It's like a reference guide. Go back and find what you need to know and move forward. So anyways, th those are the first two parts. The third part of the book, though, is, is where I take everything we teach in math from kindergarten to calculus, everything, every single topic, and we put it into one list. Let's make one list of all the topics that we teach, and, and I'll show this later, but let's just make one list of all the topics that we teach. And what if I could, maybe we could create a tool, a resource that guides you through the journey, starting at counting working your way through fractions, decimals, percents, arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, prime numbers, prime factorizations, working your way into rules of exponents and how exponents work, inequalities, equations, absolute value, graphing. We work our way through graphing and we continue the journey and we just keep going. If you use this model, it doesn't matter where you are right, right now in life, you could take the tool and you can learn all the math you need to know. At the end of this, you should be able to go into calculus with confidence, right? So that's the recommendation that I have for how we should approach math. A logical progression with mastery expectations all through the journey going to, the, to, go into calculus, because calculus is beautiful. I tell people if you're 90 years old and you've never taken calculus and you feel like you're missing something in life, right? You know Jesus, you know truth, uh, you know what life is about, but you don't know math or calculus, we have the resource for you. We will give you calculus resources if you really want to enjoy it. So imagine if we kept that in perspective. We're training you to get into calculus and then to flourish. And you could do statistics as well. So let me show you a few of the books, okay? There's a big stack over here. And I just want to go over these briefly and then we'll be done with the video. So this is the stack, but I'm going to just take it one at a time. So basically, we start with kindergarten, right? You help your students to understand, and even before kindergarten, shapes and certain numbers and letters and all of those details. But eventually, what we need to do, okay, let's say a student is ready to jump into formal math learning. We start with addition, right? We get a solid foundation with addition. This series um, called the Master Mathematics series is a very good resource. I was going to name my book Master Mathematics, and that's when I realized they had a resource out there. So that's why our resource is called Tools for Mastery Mathematics. So you start with addition, right? So we have that resource. When you've mastered and understand how to work with addition, you've mastered and understand how to work with subtraction, right? Again, if a student needs all of first grade to work through a lot of addition and subtraction, that's fine. If they get through it quicker, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. And then we have multiplication, right? And division. Those go next. Now, you do your multiplication first, of course. In about third grade, a lot of students are working on that, singing songs, memorizing it. And then you move into uh, division, right? So you do your multiplication and division. You do your fractions. Get, make sure you understand fractions. Very important topic for everything. Uh, you do your decimals, right? And then uh, the resource, this particular resource does come with like a parent's manual and games to help kids understand. But this is just showing us a path there. So imagine you've mastered all those topics that I just shared with you, okay? Now let's move on to the next lead. So once you've mastered those, right? Sorry, I had to move my iPad there. Once you've mastered those, you have a handbook you can go back to, like an, a math dictionary for elementary school students. So that at any given point, you remember what you need to work on. Um, you know, if you've forgotten how to do certain things, you could go back and use this to learn what you're working on. But once you've mastered those concepts, the next logical progression, honestly, if your child really loves math and is ready for the challenge, I'm about, about to say something that might be a little shocking. 
they can literally do algebra. They, there's no reason why they can't do algebra at this point. If they can do those topics I showed you, they could do algebra. But let's say you say, no, 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 we don't want Johnny in fifth grade doing algebra. He's going to look strange to his friends. Okay, sure. Do, do a pre-algebra course. This is a Redwoods pre-algebra textbook that you can print online. Go ahead and do a pre-algebra course. Guess what you're going to realize? You're going to learn fractions, decimals, percents, ratios, proportions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all over again. And that's fine. Let's buy, let's buy a year. Sure. Let's buy a year. So about fifth grade, let's buy a year and use a pre-algebra textbook. And then we dive into algebra. Now, I use um, Tyler Wallace algebra for my students, but this is a, another algebra textbook, right? Like Glencoe Algebra 1. You could do that if you want. Okay, use Glencoe Algebra 1. That's fine. Um, our tower is getting too tall here. So let's, let's move some books out of the way. So you've done the arithmetic sequence. You've done pre-algebra. You're in sixth or seventh grade and you're like, what's next? You've done algebra 1. Okay, great. Another shocking no news update. Algebra 2 and pre-calc are actually literally the same thing. If you look at, for example, right, somebody might say, no, wait, this is a larsen hot Stetzler textbook. This is a pre-calc textbook. I have the algebra textbook in my, in my library. Put those side by side. The topics are literally the same. The same. I mean, my friends were making students repeat too much, right? As you can see, my heart burns with yearning for like, we got to step it up. So if you know algebra and you understand the concept, you're ready to do Algebra 2 concepts, but what are Algebra 2 concepts? They're pre-calc concepts. They're in pre-calc textbooks. This textbook is pre-calculus, but what's the subtitle? College Algebra and Trigonometry. What, are, what do some schools call their Algebra 2 class? College Algebra. It's the same thing. Part of my goal, as you would notice, is I'm trying to reduce waste of time because these young people were created for a purpose. Let's get them to learn what they need to learn and move on. And so if you go through a pre-calculus textbook, you cover every single thing you would need to know in an Algebra 2 textbook. And I actually have a, a I, I wrote a description of this. I took all the Algebra 2 topics, all the pre-calc topics, and I was trying to find, are there any topics that we will, you know, like that are taught in one class and are not touched in the other? The whole Algebra 2 is absorbed into pre-calc. Now, the Algebra 1 I textbook I use also covers Algebra 2 concepts. So basically, you are covered. You'll be just fine if you go with that route. But I think I've dropped a little, a few shocking updates in this video. So I'm going to cool down here and go to some normalcy. So we have arithmetic, we have pre-algebra, we have algebra one, we have algebra two pre-calc built in. No, put, no, 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 we don't put geometry in between. I know many schools do this, but we really have to rethink that, right? Some people say they know why they do it. That's good. Do you know why you do it? Do you know why you put geometry in between algebra one and two? I don't think it's a good move. I think kids should just master the concept in algebra and keep going. Oh, by the way, I also believe in year-round math schooling. I don't think we should take three months off. It's just a waste of, um, like, it, it, it pushes kids back and then they have to review. And so we'll do that, uh, you know, all those courses. And then we have geometry, which you can do as well with your pre-calculus, after pre-calculus. Um, our students actually will read Euler's, I mean, Euler's book. They will read Leonard Euler's book. And they would also read uh, Euclid. We'll read some Euclid. We have, you, you, we have the, the Greek and the English version of the Euclid book. Um, I'm going to look at this one here. This is the Euclid, a Greek and English version. So you can see the Greek and the English side by side. So uh, that's a lot to chew on. But if we're going year round, we can do this, right? And then this is our calculus textbook. So our goal is to work our way, get into calculus, and enjoy the process. Math is beautiful. Why are we teaching it in the way we teach it? Where many students sometimes don't love it, don't think it has any application. We're going to teach the content. We're going to teach the history. We're going to teach the application. And we're going to seek to inspire students who love learning. The topics in math need to be isolated and taught for mastery. It's not about, oh, I'm in fifth grade math. I'm in sixth grade math. It's about, do you know the math you're doing, the specific concept? Are you mastering it? Math was not broken into first, second, third, fourth grade type uh, or, you know, that's not how many of these people learn math. The ones I talked about earlier. How did they learn math? This is what I need to know now. I'm going to learn it and master it. This is what I need to know. And sometimes guess what they did? Oh, this, this doesn't exist. I'm going to invent or create a way to solve a problem like this. Isn't that amazing? That people like Isaac Newton and Bernoulli and, and Euler are coming up with techniques for doing things in the 1700s, 1600s, 1661, Newton is working on some amazing things. 1700s, we have Euler. 1800s, well, 1700s into 1800s, we have Gauss. My friends, we can raise some great generation of mathematicians, and that's part of what we're going to do at our academy. They will get the tools they need to be able to be doing calculus for fun in ninth grade. Let them graduate with a math minor. That's exactly part of what we want that every student gets an opportunity to graduate with a math minor.
Take care and thank you for watching. Sorry if I got a little too excited there. I'm not mad at anybody. I just think our standards need to be addressed as soon as possible. Take care and have a great day.